Slugs and snails might be the arch enemy of all gardeners, but they're vitally important to our ecosystem, not least to the slow worm, who can't get enough of them. Slow worms are one of only six reptiles native to the UK, and we're in prime slow worm territory. I mean, Worcester's a fairly small city and there's quite a lot of um, long-standing and um, fairly well-established green space. And slow worms like edge habitats, so they like long grass and areas to hide and, and forage in where they're going to be um, fairly um, safe from predators. And the school has already been visited by one causing quite a bit of lunchtime drama. A few months ago we had a slow worm in the school. Um, I remember I was on duty at lunchtime and a couple of children came running in, Mr Schiffman, Mr Schiffman, there's a snake. And so of course I went outside to have a look and lo and behold there was, about, about that big, it was probably an adult slow worm and it, it sort of slithered up onto the tarmac. We sort of quite a crowd around as you can imagine. So we opened up a little escape route for it and it very quickly slithered off back into the grass of the field and out of sight. Next time one glides by, we want to persuade it to stay. So with my newly recruited wildlife detectives, Curtis, Diego and Eve, I'm going to an allotment right near Worcester city centre. We want to see if we can find a slow worm to help us learn more about these legless lizards and how we can encourage them into the school garden. Well, Lansdowne Crescent Allotments um, is, is a really, really good site for slow worms. Um, it was first discovered in, in 1997 when a, a survey was commissioned and it's thought that this site is probably the best urban location for slow worms in the whole of the, the United Kingdom. So we should have a great chance of finding some today. Right, so guys, have you got any idea where these slow worms might be hiding? In, under the tins. Under the tins. Right. Are they right? James? I think they are, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Under Shall we have a look? Yeah, let's have a look. Slowly there. No. They're quite elusive, aren't they, slow worms? Yeah, they lead quite secretive lives. See anything straight away? No slow worms. Are they quick to scuttle off, you know, if you, they're kind of found, would they sort of slither off somewhere quickly? If they're warm, yes, they can, they can move surprisingly fast. They may be fast, but our wildlife detectives don't give up. Whoa, there's two! Oh, look at that! Wow! Just get that one. I thought that I was going to. That's a young one there. Just have to be careful because they do shed their tails as a defence mechanism. The tins provide somewhere that's sheltered, protected from predators, yeah. and hopefully somewhere that warms up that little bit quicker. And when you say protection from predators, uh, what exactly are they kind of hiding from? Well, um, domestic cats are a big problem in this kind of city environment, um, but magpies. Um, blackbirds can take small ones, so wow. yeah, a whole host of things really are out to get slow worms. So, tip number one, the more sheltered spaces we can create at school, the better our chances. But the children are still keen to find more slow worms. It's been quite good because we found two so far, but we could have found more. I like the colour of it because it's bright yellowish greeny and that colour would be sort of rare, I think. As the sun heats up, so does our search. And then, bingo. We've got one under here. I'll just try and get it out. Oh, wow. Oh, look. Mm -hmm. It's wow, quite a decent big. sized one. That is one Jeez. big slow worm. He looks like he's smiling. <laughs> he's probably happy that the sun's come out now, isn't he? Yeah. It's amazing what they can do with their bodies. It is, isn't it? It's amazing nice. how they actually suck up the slugs. I love it. Initially, I think, especially the boys, I think they'd rather be out playing football, so I don't think they were too sure, but I think James really brought the slow worm to life, and when we got to actually see one and touch one and hear about some of their amazing features, I think it stoked a little bit of interest in them, uh, but little did they know that I've got a surprise for them later on, and I think that's really going to make them excited about the slow worm. Now, slow worms often suffer from a case of mistaken identity. People think they're a snake, but in fact they're not. And Langan Turner from Dudley Zoo has come along with a few of his reptile friends. So, what is the difference then between a snake and a slow worm? Because they look pretty similar to me. Watch him blinking. Hmm. Can you see him blinking? No. Nope. No. He can't blink. He doesn't have eyelids. Oh, he doesn't? Snakes don't have eyelids. They're like swimming goggles. 
But slow worms are lizards. Well, lizards do have eyelids. So if you see something that looks like a snake but it blinks, yeah. it's got to be a lizard. It's got to be a lizard. I don't know about you guys, but I can kind of see the slow worm a little bit more with this yeah, so lizard. We pop you down there. Mm, lizard. <laughs> lizard. Uh, uh, uh. You can actually see if his legs kept on getting smaller, you'd end up with a very long bodied animal. Yeah, definitely. With a fairly thick head. And you would have something that looks very much like a slow oh, one. I just saw his tongue. <laughs> so these little dudes are a gardener's friend munching up the pests that eats our plants. They're a welcome addition to any garden or allotment. So what can you do to attract them to your green space? Back to James, our man with a plan. Compost heaps are great for slow worms. They provide warm and moist conditions, um, which is ideal for when you know, they want to hibernate. And it also provides um, cover and shelter from predators. OK, now this is quite a big compost heap, and I imagine not everyone could have one of these in their garden. Is there anything else that keep, people can do to kind of recreate this? Yes, certainly. You can build what's called a hibernaculum. OK, OK. How about that sounds quite technical. I'm not sure I could build a hibernaculum. What, what is one? Well, it's just kind of a fancy name for trying to recreate the conditions that they need for hibernation. So you would build um, a similar structure out of rubble, sticks and earth. So what, James, I quite like the idea of being able to go home and say, today I built a hibernaculum. What do you reckon, guys? Are we capable of doing that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wicked. They're up for it. I think James was great at really explaining why these animals are so interesting and to get hands-on was incredible. And then obviously Langan came in from the zoo and brought these very exotic animals that are related to animals that they can find on their doorstep. And so I just hope it's inspired them to go and try and attract some slow worms to their garden at school. Back at school, the kids waste no time in building their slow worm des res. It's looking quite good. It's, yeah, do you think so, Meg? I think it's looking quite good as well. What do you think, guys? Are you quite happy with this, yeah? So, are these wildlife workers confident that slow worms will use their new home? It depends if it don't rain and if it's always sunny then, yeah, we'll get some. I think they will because they like hiding and it's all covered so all the other animals can't get into it so they can see. A bit more soil and water and we have... One finished hibernaculum. They've done a great job. And put it there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And with a perfect pad all ready to move into, hopefully next time a slow worm is passing through the playground, it'll decide to stay. That's nice work, guys.